Okay, hey everybody. Um, if you're watching this video, you've made it. This is our it's our first day of class. So my name is Claire Kessler, and I am your professor for this fall for Vidi 303. I'm super excited to be here, and I'm super excited to meet you all in person on Wednesday. So if you don't know already, Mondays will be online. It'll be a pre-recorded lecture just like this on YouTube and Wednesdays we'll be meeting in person for any activities or, or labs or anything like that. So, so hello. Um, so just to get us started off, I have a couple of slides just to kind of get us into the class, the format of everything, accessing Canvas. Um, so I will send this video to you directly to your email. I don't want to assume that people already know how to get into Canvas or anything. Um, you know, some people sign up for these courses after, you know, not have been in school being in school for a long time. So I just wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page and everyone can access everything they need to. So without further ado, welcome to Vidi 303. This fall we'll be covering everything, everything that happens in the vineyard from harvest to dormancy. So it's gonna be a super exciting time. Um, for today's outline, we're just gonna talk a little bit about the Vidi program. We're gonna go through important links for the class. We're also going to navigate Canvas together go through the syllabus, talk about Discord, how to connect to Wi-Fi, and then we're gonna have a little introduction lecture, just, um, just a couple of slides about some fun information about viticulture in California. So about the program. So VIDI is our acronym for our program, it means viticulture, but we do teach viticulture and enology courses. So study of the grapes and study of fermentation science. Uh, we have a program map if you're interested, we offer an Associates of Science degree or certificate, which is very exciting. So you can go onto our website and you can see um, what we offer and the degree requirements too. So you see the courses that you would need to take. Um, of course, the degree for the Associates of Science is a little more intense than the certificate program. Certificate program, um, you know, you can take a couple of the video courses and then some business classes, um, but Things are updating all the time, but we would update this website with that, so just stay with the website. Um, it's a really fun program to be a part of. Um, I feel very fortunate to be teaching in this program, but um, we live in a state and also in a community that thrives in winemaking, grape growing, and just agriculture in general. We're definitely the agriculture capital of the United States. Um, so lots of opportunity there. So lots of local places you could potentially work at, opportunities, any potential jobs in this industry, like immediately you could work in a vineyard. So if you have a green thumb and you just wanna be with the plants, that's fantastic, there's jobs for you. If you wanna be in winemaking and be in fermentation science, there's lots of opportunity there. Hospitality, if you wanna work in a tasting room or um, like talking with people, getting to know them and serving them wine, which is awesome management, event coordination, if you like throwing parties, great. Um, sommelier, those are the, the fancy people who get certified and learn how to pair food with wine, learn about where wine comes from all over the world, what to expect from certain varieties, how they taste, uh, how to serve people wine in more formal restaurant situations um, and offer suggestions for them. So very cool, very, um, respected certification there. Uh, food and wine pairing, just in general, you'll learn about that in the courses that we offer. Uh, marketing, there's a huge need for wine marketing in this industry, so that's always an opportunity and much, much more. If you wanted to take these courses and then continue your education, um, there's a lot of things. I only have a couple on the slide right now, but like food science um, and research, you could go into brewing, you could go into distillation, you could go into, um, you know, just so many other options out there. So for example, um, I went to UC Davis for my degree. I got my bachelor's in viticulture and enology there. And um, they have a whole food science program at Davis. So the fun thing about that is orange chicken from Panda Express that we're all addicted to, that was actually created at the food science lab at UC Davis. So they bring in a panel of people, they go through a couple different recipes, they do some consumer testing and see what combination of ingredients or recipes are the most um, tasty to these individuals and then they'll d develop the recipe and keep going for these big, big corporations and businesses. Um, they wanna know those things and they'll pay a lot of money to get those things. So if you're interested in that, um, like I said, 
there's just so many things you could do in this industry. Uh, great breeding programs, developing new varieties that are disease resistant, um, are drought resistant. There's just, it's awesome. So lots of fun stuff to look forward to. The list goes on. Okay, so links for this class. Um, I'll send you the slideshow too in the email that I send you guys. So for this class, we have a couple different things. Uh, one is Canvas. So you will access everything you need to know from our Canvas course. It's an online website, but it's also offered as a student app. So this is the Canvas logo here. So if you download the app, make sure you download the student app because there's also a teacher app, which unless you're teaching courses at the college, you won't need to worry about. So stick with the student app. So we'll go ahead and we'll log into um, Canvas. So I, you can click on the link that I provided on the slide if you want. And it'll take you right to our login. So um, I am currently already logged in. So I'm going to sign out just for example. So when you click on this link, you'll get this uh, welcome to you know, Los Rios Community College sign in, right? So what you'll do is to sign in, you use your student ID, which is W plus the digits that you were assigned for your student ID. So W, and this one's mine. Cool. And I'm using my personal computer, so it remembers my password. So it'll be the same exact password that you use to enroll in the system. Um, you just have one password through Los Rios, so you'll just use that password. And then, bloop, I'll put you in. So you will see um, tiles a lot like this. You're a student, so you might not see everything that I see. It might be a little bit different. But the big thing that we're looking for is Canvas. So here again, we have the nice little sun logo or whatever it is. I think it's a sun. Cool. And then once you log in, you will see your dashboard. So this will be all of the courses that you have enrolled in for the fall. So again, mine might look different than yours but we should share this Vidi 303 Fall 2024 Kessler, or it might show up like this code down here. So um, you'll just click on the tile, and it'll take us straight to our course. So what we have here is our home page of our course, and um, you can see this little bar on the side. We have two bars for navigation. Um, the dashboard will take you back to your dashboard where all of your classes are listed. Um, if, if you don't find your class here, you can go to courses and you can try to find your course there, but it should be up here on the dashboard. Um, then you also have the inbox where you can go and you can message your instructor, me, directly um, or other instructors that you have. So that was cool. You can check that out. Um, and we'll also go over other ways to contact me too. So let's just go back to our class page here on Canvas. And what we have at the very top are recent announcements. Then we have kind of just like, you know, the 303 welcome. It's a little bit about me. Nothing will be quizzed on. And then I also like to have my important links here too. So if you want the link to the syllabus, it's right here. The course schedule, it's very important. We'll go through this in just a moment. Um, my YouTube channel where all my lectures will be posted for you. It'll also be linked in the course schedule, but if you just want to like subscribe to my channel or whatever, you get a notification as soon as I upload it, that's fine. If you're savvy with that and you like that, that's great. No pressure. Um, we also have our Discord group, which I'll go through and how to access campus Wi-Fi. So all, I just try to think of the most important links that I could that I'd want to know as a student. I just put them up right away so you're good to go. Uh, a little bit about me, fun stuff. Again, and you're not gonna get quizzed on that, so don't worry. Um, and then, like I said, we mentioned this a second bar of navigation here. So like I said, we're on the home page. announcements. They were listed at the top of the home page, but you could also click on the announcements tab to load more. Um, this is just where, like I said, this is where I'll post any important information, say, um, we have a tasting coming up or you know um that you have an exam coming up i'll make a announcement here hey by the way or oh i opened up the date the due dates for this quiz you can now take this quiz again if you need to etc stuff like that so all good stuff then we have the syllabus so you can access things in mul multiple points so just tried to make it as easy and make the most sense as possible for you guys. Um, I like to have a live link for the syllabus because 
the syllabus is a living and breathing thing. It's always changing, it's always developing. So I like to just have it in links. And we'll just go ahead and click on that while we're here. Don't worry, I'll make this much, much bigger so you can read it. Um, if you'd like to print it out for your own records, put it in a binder, put it on your fridge, you're welcome to do that. But, um, but yeah, I like to keep the syllabus as a live link for you guys. So yes, here is our syllabus. So let's just dive into this. So the 303, Viticultural Practices from Harvest to Dormancy, um, are, it's a full semester term. So we run from the last week of August to mid-December. Uh, we're doing online, non-synchronous. So I, like I said, I'll post pre-recorded lectures just like this one for you to watch. And normally there's a follow-up quiz to be completed with that. Uh, we will meet Wednesday nights. 630 to 935 and that's in room A105. It's here at the El Dorado Center. So building A, go back to the, it's on the very first floor. Go to the very back of the building and we're right there. So A105. Um, my name is Claire Kessler and I do have an office in, at the El Dorado Center now. So it's building B, so it's where student services is. If you go up to the second floor, uh, room 239, that's where I am. You can, um, say hi to me or you can also schedule uh, office hours to uh, if you need help with any work or you need to talk about anything um, I do still work in the wine industry so if you're looking for any tips about places to work or you're not quite sh you want to work in the industry and you want to talk about you know potential possibilities and what you might want to do or even if you just need someone to listen to you um, I'm here for you guys so it's quite literally my job to be here for you so even if you're going through, you know, a hard time or you're not quite sure something to do, we definitely want to make sure that all of our students know that this is an open and welcome environment. Um, we are here for all of our students. We treat all of our students equally. And I can tell you, like, I was a student once too. And guess what? My mental health was not fantastic during that time. I put way too much on my plate. I had a lot of things going on at home and in my personal life, and I would have really loved someone to talk to. So if you're feeling that way, you just let me know. So I'm happy to be that person. Moving on, we have student learning outcomes. So this is, these are the requirements that have been set by the department for me, what I'm required to teach you. So this is what we're hoping to achieve by the time you finish this course. So we will be able to Describe and demonstrate the theory and practices of vineyard management post-harvest through dormancy. Cool. Describe and demonstrate post-harvest practices for irrigation, fertilization, cover crop planning, and pre-pruning. Explain how to evaluate and effectively control common vineyard pests and diseases for the fall and winter seasons. And um, describe and demonstrate proper planting techniques for new vines and grafting techniques for established rootstock. So if all of that sounds very confusing to you, don't worry. It'll be okay. We'll walk through it together. But with that, with that being said, there's still a lot of room for more information and more things to be learned too. So part of, we'll go over this later, but I will ask you to take a class survey and if there's something that you really want to learn that you don't know anything about, just let me know. So this is my first time teaching this course. So you are in a unique situation as my first run students uh, where I can create the material to be what you're interested in. So I hope it's interesting to begin with. And the, the objective is to make this educational, informative, but also fun. Not everything in life should be a punishment. Um, but yeah, so keep that in mind. So start thinking, is there something I really wanna learn about? And then just, you can let me know in that survey. Cool, so also linked in the syllabus, we have our class schedule and reading assignments. So this is also linked on our homepage and linked in the slideshow too. So this is a big old spreadsheet. And because I'm new to teaching this course, I'm still writing a lot of these things. Um, this is kind of my rough draft for how our class is gonna look. So what you'll know is Monday, which if you're watching this on Monday, great, the 26th, um, our class is online and it's an introduction to video 303, which is exactly what we're doing. Your assigned work will be the welcome to class survey and it's due a week after the, the class is scheduled. So as a rule of thumb, until we get closer to wrapping up at the end of the semester, 
Um, all assignments, I give you at least a week notice. So if we had a lecture about, for example, overview of vines, grapevine anatomy and physiology, um, then you would be assigned a quiz um, and it would be a week from this date. So, you know, on the 9th, it would be due on the 9th, right before midnight. So, and I'd put the due date here. The assigned work, the title of it is here. Um, I also have textbook here. Textbook readings, I know everyone's like, oh, they will not be required. Uh, I know everyone has jobs and families, and I'm not going to be that teacher that's like, you need to spend 80 hours a week on this class, because I just know that's not reasonable, and I wasn't that student, so I wouldn't expect you to be that student. So, so yeah, so just focus on this part of the spreadsheets. I also have like lesson planning. That's for me. Don't worry about that. If you, you're welcome to read it. There's no secrets, but this is... This is just for me about what I'm going to be talking about um, during those sessions. So like I said, the class is still being written. It's brand spanking new. So if there's something you're interested in, let me know. Cool. So that's the class schedule. And again, I keep don't print it out. I keep it a link because it's always is going to keep updating. And if there's something like a field trip or something, um, I will let you know, which there is uh, potentially on Saturday the 21st, September 21st, um, I think his name's Daniel. Mr. D'Agostini, uh, the owner of Abodenza Farms in Amador, is going to do a field trip for us. And um, you're welcome to bring a spouse, you're welcome to bring a friend, uh, whatever. Um, it's gonna be $15 a person, and it's gonna run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is gonna be a really fun experience because this farm is completely organic and biodynamic, and he does so much more than just grapes. So there's a whole, um, all this information about the soil and how we care for the ecosystem and the microorganisms and everything. So it's gonna be a really cool experience. He's got hands-on activities. Um, we'll talk more about it as we get closer, but definitely put that on your calendar for the 21st. It will not be required for the class because I don't feel comfortable making an event on an unscheduled class day required, but it would be really nice if you could come. So um, if you can, awesome. If you have a wedding, you know, a kidney transplant, blah, blah, whatever, that's okay. Um, but just letting you know now, so hopefully you can put it on your calendar. So that'll be a really, really fun experience. Okay, class layout. Mondays, I'll post a YouTube lecture link and it will be linked to the class schedule. So this right, right here will, after I record this and post it, I'll be linked right here. So you can go into the class schedule and then bloop, you can click on this and it will take you to the YouTube recording of this video. So I'll put that there. And then this is of course linked to Canvas. So hopefully that helps there. Wednesdays will meet the El Dorado Center. We'll do a presentation and probably an activity. Um, I like to just do activities if I can because you can always watch me lecture on here. Um, also, with that being said, don't be afraid in the survey to talk about what your preference is for learning. If you feel like these YouTube videos are great and you're taking in all the information and you like that you can pause and fold your laundry or take a bathroom break and come back or listen to the soothing sound of my voice as many times as you want. Awesome. If you feel like it's not effective and you prefer being taught in person, let me know. We can make adjustments. So just like I said, just be open and honest. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be upset. It's literally my job. So cool. Uh, for quizzes and assignments, it's going to be on Canvas. So how I do my, uh, presentations and you'll see shortly every at the end of every lecture contains a slide that says learning objectives and if there are any required readings I'll say required readings um, you'll have to complete these I would recommend you go through them before you take your quiz so I like them because it just bullet points the big things that you should have taken away from that lecture uh, when I was a student I had a really hard time looking at the trees and not seeing the forest. I'd get so overwhelmed with all the small details that was presented to me, especially when I was uh, studying at a UC, that I wouldn't get the big concepts. So I like having the learning objectives because um, it just bullet points those big concepts. 
So no tricks, um, just, you know, keeping it straightforward. Okay, textbooks and materials. So the textbook that I'm using to reference most of this class is called The New Viticulture. It looks like this by Jamie Good. I have it all, see, I've been doing my work. I'm a good teacher, got it all tabbed out here. But um, it's, it's very affordable. It's like, I think it's like $20 on Amazon. It's paperback. Um, I think the way that it's written is very nice. It's very approachable from anyone from any background. That's what I'm using for a lot of the class, but I'm also, I didn't type it up here yet, but I'm also using General Viticulture by A.J. Winkler, James Cook, and a couple other folks. I'll put this on this, I'll update the syllabus, I'll put this on here too, but um, this is like one of the OG Viticulture textbooks. If you don't know the name Winkler and you wanna go to Davis, you will find out he's kind of a big deal. So, um, so yeah, so those are the textbooks I'm referencing for the course. I will put in the presentations, I will cite my work, and I'll say it came from this book, this chapter, this page, whatever. You're welcome to read along if you really want to um, just get that extra layer of knowledge and development. I recommend it. I think, I think you should expand the way that you take information. You should hear it from me, you should hear it from my voice, read it from the slides, read it from the textbook. It could be worded a little bit differently. The more you expose yourself to this stuff, the deeper and deeper your knowledge um, will be. So, so there's that. Okay, grading scale, pretty standard. We have A through F, you know, um, normally students do pretty well in my class, so I'm not really worried. Uh, assignments, just ignore this for now. The class is still being written. I have no idea how many quizzes you're gonna have. I have no idea how many lab activities we're gonna have or how many points they are. So. I will update it as we go in the course. If there's any it's ever a time that you're concerned about your grade or you're not sure of something, just, just let me know and we'll talk about it. I do, all of your grades will be on Canvas so you will see real time what your grade is. So there's no surprises. There's, no, there's nothing at the end of the semester that's gonna you know, jump on you and freak you out. So, so don't worry. Okay. I also like to do a little post about important dates. So classes start officially August 24th. Um, you're gonna wanna get parking permits. Uh, if you decide that you wanna drop classes, these are really important because if you want your money back um, or if you don't want to affect your record, these are all the big dates for that. And um, yeah, so if if you would like to look more into this, I have it linked to our, our, the link to our academic calendar right here. It'll take you to that website where I took the screenshot. So, perfect. Okay, communication. So there's a couple different ways to stay in communication with me. Um, but one thing that we really enjoy doing is with this whole Viticulture program, we've really created this really nice like group community of students. We have students from all different ages, backgrounds, disciplines, um, mindsets, it's amazing, and we all share this common thread of being interested in wine and viticulture, you know, and in winemaking. So what we've developed is this group called Discord, and it's free, and it can be, um, you can access it on your computer, and you can also access it on an app, it's a free app called Discord. You can create groups with other friends. Originally it was created for gamers to get together, but um, people of other interests have come on it too. So um, the link that I have for the syllabus is an invite. If you accept the invite, um, this is our group. This is what you'll see. So we have, you know, here's our little logo here, FLC Vidi Group. We have all of these different, what's called channels and information hubs here. So we have welcome and welcome and rules. Uh, it's a free service, you know, please be respectful and kind. What you post on here, everyone sees, so just be mindful of that. Um, you can be kicked out um, of the group if you are naughty, but that hasn't been a problem, so hopefully be good. Cool, announcements. Uh, we just did a UC Davis tour with some of our students, so we had some folks post a couple things that we did and saw. Um, here's a little pop-up about our class, Vidi 303, fantastic. Um, internships and jobs, any postings that we find, I put it on here and it could be possibilities for you. We also have a 
really fun and active wine tasting group. So, um, for example, like this Friday, I know we aren't quite at class yet. So Friday the 16th, I'm doing a Sauvignon Blanc tasting. So it's free to all the students. We let people RSVP and then we do it here on campus. So, and then I also encourage students to organize their own tasting groups where they can go out with their friends, um, people of like minds that are interested in trying a new winery, exploring a new region. That's a great place to do that. Um, then we have all the classes set up here too. So Vidi 303, this is where you and I um, and your classmates could chat about getting together, studying, or any type of, you know, if I'm trying to get a hold of someone during um, like one of our tours or something, I could post in here or it's how we could communicate um, outside of Canvas. We have our, all of our other courses here. So, you know, if you're curious, you're like, man, what's the 308 Enology class up to? You can go back here and look. If this whole situation, we don't have a lot of messaging happening on here. It's not super active yet. But I did want to point out that if you want to sign up for our Discord and join the group, you don't have to receive notifications from all these. You can actually uh, mute these. You could just say, oh, I just want to get notifications from wine tasting groups and you know, like the one class that I signed up for. That's fine. Um, so there's lots of possibilities there. And then you can also send me a direct message too, if you uh, would like, which is up here. You just go to direct messages and then um, you can send a message to me. Or I think you can if you just click on my name. So like here, Francisco, I could, you know, message him directly through here and be like, hey, I heard you work at so-and-so. Do you guys do tours? I mean, possibilities are endless. So that that's our Discord. Like I said, it's free. It's not required for you to join. Um, but if you want to be in the loop for tours, events, tastings in the program, um, that's like one of the best modes of communication that we have. So, so we do have that. Cool. And there's the invite link there. Okay. Conduct and discipline. No cheating, please. Uh, I was a student. I know. I know what it, I see it. You know, it's a big red flag when I see it. Um, and also, like, it's so cliche, but it's so true. You're just cheating yourself. You know, just if you signed up for this class, you obviously wanted to learn something. So just do yourself a favor and learn something. And and you will find that it's very rewarding. So like I said, very cliche, sorry. Um, with that being said, um, if you are taking this class as a couple or with a friend or whatever, you have to do your own work and submit it as individuals. This isn't filing your taxes together. It's not like that. You have to submit your own assignments, your own work to be graded. Um, if you're doing a lab activity as a group, that is different. You can put all the names of the people in the group and submit one paper to be to be graded. So, so just putting that out there. Um, also, just be respectful. This is a really good group of students. It's a great community that we've created so far and we intend on keeping it that way so just be open keep it positive and be kind and patient with each other like i said we all have different backgrounds some people are walking into this who have already worked in the industry for five years some people are walking into this with with absolutely no background um so let's just be let's just be good to each other and you know it'll be really good we have not we haven't ever had any problems with this but um, it's always good just to bring it up on the syllabus. Cool. So, whew, that was a lot of information. So we went through the syllabus. We went through the class schedule. We talked about the Discord server. So like we said, it's something you can access on your computer. It's also a free app. So if you want to put it on your phone, that's fantastic. Totally up to you. Next, we have logging into campus Wi-Fi. My arch nemesis so this is the website with the instructions for logging into the wi-fi on campus i do not have any service on my phone at el dorado center you might depending on your self provider but um i would highly recommend trying to get this together on the first day and you have to be patient it's very hard to connect to it i think i think there's just so much security around the wi-fi on campus that it takes a while to process that you're trying to connect and you might have to you know turn off your phone restart it turn off 
uh, Wi-Fi, turn it back on to connect. Like there's a, there's a whole process. But um, no matter what you are or what you have, sorry, what device you have, um, iPhone, uh, Chromebook, Android devices, there are different instructions for each one. So go onto this website, you know, and then you can click select which, which one applies to you. And then um, hopefully you can have luck uh, signing into Wi-Fi. And if it doesn't work the first time, trust me, uh, just be very patient. Eventually it'll work out. Um, but yeah, once, once you get connected to that, your device should recognize it every time you're on campus and you should be okay. But um, it is kind of a painstaking process, so sorry. Okay, so at this point, um, we're gonna just hop into a couple fun slides about viticulture. If you need to take a break in this video or hit pause, totally cool. That was a lot of information thrown your way. We just have, how many slides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven slides about viticulture. But um, I tried to make it interesting. It is interesting. Viticulture is very interesting. Um, I will just say, and we'll go over this when we meet in class, my background is mostly winemaking. Um, it is winemaking. I did graduate with a degree in viticulture and enology. I took classes on viticulture back in 2018. But working in active practice, I am a winemaker. So um, whereas I do have a baseline knowledge of this, a lot of this I'll have to relearn and we'll just have to work through it together. But um, but like I said, there's, I, there will definitely be questions that you ask me that I don't know the answer to, but I'm very committed to getting you those answers, looking up the information and getting those tools together for all of us. So um, like I said, we'll just do the best that we can and it's gonna be a really fun semester and you know, it's gonna be good. So, I have a good feeling. Okay, introduction to viticulture. All right, what is viticulture? I'm gonna, so we can see a little bit better here. Okay, cool, what is viticulture? So, uh, viti is the, is the root word for uh, life in, um, in Latin. So, from, you know, grapes comes life, viticulture, is the study of grape cultivation, especially for winemaking. So when we talk about viticulture, it's mostly associated with winemaking. It's not not always associated with like table grapes. So why is this so important is that viticulture is the foundation on which the entire wine industry stands. Um, it's, a, it's the basis for the flavor of the wine, the quality of the wine, aromas, whether or not the wine's gonna age, how much that wine's gonna cost, everything um it's just the whole basis of the industry um this also kind of ties into a concept called terroir uh, which is a french term and it means a sense of place and wine and what really affects these things are the climate topography so like the hillsides the mountains the elevation soil type you have clay sand silt uh, flora and fauna what type of plants are growing nearby what type of animals are nearby these are all things that affect the flavors and the quality of the fruit and we'll get much much more in detail of this in later lectures but ultimately i want us to understand that you really can't make good wine without high quality fruit that's where it starts uh, being a winemaker has all of its glory and i'm sure a coolness a attached to it but winemaking is really just facilitating the next stage of the grape. So it all starts in the vineyard. Um, the wine is made in the vineyard, and then we just facilitate the fermentation and do our best not to screw it up. That's, that's really what the philosophy of winemaking is, what it should be, in my opinion. We're not here to manipulate that much. We just want to express what it is. Cool. Okay, a little bit about grapevines. So this comes from our new viticulture textbook. I thought this was funny. Um, grapevines are considered as structural parasites, which I thought was hilarious. Grapevines have these um, little parts on them called tendrils. These are little hands that come out, these little feelers. You can see it uh, right here. So these are little feelers that come out of the vine to sense what they can grab onto to climb on top of to reach sunlight. So what they'll do if you, if you uh, YouTube a video of it in real time it actually like spins uh, throughout the day so you can't see it because it's like in very slow motion in real time but if you put it in like whatever 10 times speed the video is like 
like these little uh, hands that keep spinning and spinning and spinning. And then as soon as they touch something, it's like, woof. And then it grows on onto that structure and takes over. Um, so here's another little picture here, how it's like, how it's uh, entwined itself with its own branch. So a little tendril coming up and climbing around. So this is kind of how grapevines feel and reach out and grow and continue to spread spread their arms, basically. So why do grapevines do this? This is kind of an interesting thing. So because they're considered parasites because they're taking advantage of another a structure or another plant that has put in the work to develop a solid base structure, a woody structure, like a tree or something else, um, to outcompete it for nutrients. So it's taking advantage of another organism potentially to compete for, for nutrients. So with these tendrils and with this climbing ability, they've also evolved um, to, so to grow upward quickly and to climb on top of things, but they're also evolved to grow very quickly below soil too. So if this is a structural parasite that's climbing onto another plant, um, it's going, its roots are entering a soil that already have other roots in it. So the roots of the grapevine grow deep, very deep and very fast. And they also are capable of living off of very limited nutrients too because of that. So it's just interesting how vigorous and um, how hardy these vines are. So grapevines, depending on the variety, will just have the potential to just keep growing and growing and growing and growing. You know, so we have some very old grapevines in this world. So we're going to talk about how grapevines came to California, but I just wanted to say, like, speaking of massive grapevines, I didn't know these grapevines existed until I read this textbook, okay? I was just, my jaw was on the floor. So the first one, I think this is the, the biggest, one of the biggest ones. This is Ramona. It's called the Mother Vine, and this was at San Gabriel Mission. It was estimated to be planted in 1774. So if this year is 2024, it's 250 years old. You can't even wrap your arms around this thing. This, this thing is not a tree, it's a grapevine. So it just shows you how that, that girth of that trunk just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's just crazy. And it's, as far as I know, it's still producing grapes. We'll have to do some Google research on that, but just amazing. This other one, um, the vine at Carpentaria, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. This was planted in 1842. It produced on its own, one single grapevine, produced eight tons of fruit in 1893. It was 51 years old at the time, and it was still considered in its prime. So a trunk circumference uh, was reported to be about nine feet by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So this is from our general, uh, my general viticulture textbook that I purchased. Um, but yeah, just look at this massive trellis system. And I just can't even, so eight tons of fruit. So 2,000 pounds per ton. That is 16,000 pounds. That is insane. I don't even, I might be like, what? Three, three trucks or something. But anyways. Pretty insane. So these are both uh, mission grapevines, and we're gonna learn about the mission vine here shortly, but pretty amazing. So winemaking is a pretty big deal around the world, but also California, of course. So how do we get all these grapevines and how did this become such a big thing? So in an oversimplified kind of history lesson here, um, a lot of this goes back to Spanish conquistadors. And when they came to the New World in 1520, specifically Hernan Cortez, um, who is very famous for doing not a lot of fantastic things, um, which you can Google on your own if you'd like. <laughs> but Cortez is actually credited for bringing some of the first grapevines from Europe to the New World in 1520. He was a conquistador, and um, the grapes were really for the purpose of allowing the Spanish missionaries to produce um, sacramental wine while they were establishing all these missions and converting people into um, into their religion. So, uh, so as the missions were being built, the grapes were being put into cut into cuttings and planted at each of those missions so each mission could make their own sacramental wine. 
So not every mission could grow uh, mission grapes. So they called them mission grapes. That's what they just called them uh, for a very long time. Um, every mission created their own mission grapes for sacramental wine. Um, some of them were making Angelica, which is a sweet fortified wine made from the mission grapes. Um, and this was for, of course, religious purposes. Uh, but what they found is they traveled north towards what's present day California. Um, the growing conditions and the vines responded better and better to the soil and to the climate. So there are some missions that were known to be like the like the mother of, of winemaking and stuff. It's in the textbook if you want to read more about it. But uh, I just thought it was really interesting how um, how that happened. And then also with the decline of missions, some of the priests were so upset that they, you know, things were changing, that they'd ripped out the grapevines and would, like, um, like destroy the vineyard. Uh, but some of them kept the vineyard intact, of course, when they end up selling the property to other people. But, um, yeah, so from what we, dis what we had uh, seen was the mission grape for so long, we've actually recently done a lot of genetic DNA tracing, and we discovered that the grapevine is actually Listan Prieto. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry. But um, that is the technical term for the um, mission grape. That might be a good quiz question. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, so these were the only grapes that were used for winemaking until dun, 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 the California Gold Rush happened. So the Gold Rush um, started in 1848. And then we called them the 49ers because they flooded to California in 1849 once everyone figured it out that there was gold here. Um, interestingly enough, there's been documentation that the Spaniards and the missionaries were fully aware that there was gold in California, but there wasn't such a huge craze about it, about spreading the information, because any gold that was found on this land, what belonged to the Spanish monarchy, went to the king. So um, I thought that was really interesting. So anyways, once immigrants found out and started to flood California, uh, the dem with that, with the gold rush, there was a huge demand for goods and services from the miners. So these people needed to be fed, they needed to drink, they wanted alcohol because not striking it rich was so depressing. Um, so it really opened up the doors for more wine production. So very interesting. So with that, we saw, of course, a, a higher production of winemaking and grape planting but mission was kind of the only vine that was um, available at the time and the problem is is that mission uh does not have great color or acidity so the wine was just not that good and a lot of these immigrants came from places like italy and in france all these wine making areas so they just knew like wow this like sucks compared to what's at home right so so with that um immigrants started to bring home cuttings we're going to talk more about that but I do want to say that there was uh, more success in growing grapes um, than there was for mining gold oftentimes. There were just so many people. Um, it was hard for enough gold to go around and for people to, to really be successful. So farming was actually one of the most lucrative ways to climb the, that ladder, basically. Um, and what wasn't only wine. It was also people were just eating the grapes. They just liked the fruit. Um, people are making brandy as well, and then people were also consuming raisins. So a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. So with this need for planting and you know, becoming grape farmers, whether it was for wine or table grapes or whatever, um, or for you know just to eat versus drink, plant nurseries started to really pop up and become a thing. And these people called nurserymen were particularly interested in, in providing different varieties and fruit to local farmers and winemakers. So everyone wanted to start planting, which was great. But, you know, these nursery men were like, we want to bring in new varieties. So one, we can make money, but two, we can start making some better things too. So this is interesting. This is, again, from the textbook of general viticulture. This is kind of the growth of the diversity in grapes in California at that time. So this is, um, you know, during the gold rush and post gold rush. So. Um, so eager to expand on this industry, these nurserymen would import varieties back to California for experimentation. This was the 1850s. So we have Warren & Son, which was a nursery in Sacramento, 
So in 1853, in their catalog, they had boasted they had four different varieties. They, we don't know what these varieties are. The textbook just says four varieties. Then we have A.P. Smith of Sacramento in 56. They had 19 different varieties, so grown pretty quickly, including Black Hamburg, Black Morocco, Black Prince, uh, Chasselis Doré, and Muscat of Alexandria. That is a wine that you can find in this county, which is crazy. I think... We have black muscat, but I don't think I know anyone that makes black hamburg. Um, okay, and moving forward, another uh, nurseryman in San Jose, Delmas, had 108 varieties. Another San Jose, B.S. Fox, 122, just a couple years later. And then we have 1861, we have uh, Thompson, and he had 35 varieties, and with this we see um, some interesting grape varieties here. We have Toque, which came from Hungary, uh, Palomino, Blue Portugal, Treminer, which is probably just short for Go Words Treminer. It's probably just easier to say at the time. And then White Riesling as well. So um, why a White Riesling, do you ask? Um, and not just Riesling. So that's just a common, that's a name in Germany for the wine, White Riesling. It refers to the drier style of, um, of Riesling there. And then other important uh, growers that brought in grape, winemaking grape varieties, and Livermore, uh, L. Mel brought in Semillon, Sauvignon Blanc. We have Trousseau and Charbonneau coming into San Jose, Stockton, French Columbard, Malaga, and Ferzagos, I think is how it's pronounced. So why is this important, do you ask? Well, because once it took so much effort to import these varieties from across the world to California at that time, that if people wanted to share or, or even um, you know have these varieties, they had to take propagations and cuttings off of those original vines. So, so some of the grape vines that, that might exist today, like the Sauvignon Blanc that might exist today in some of these vineyards might have come specifically from this grower in Livermore. Like the DNA might very well be traced back to these exact people. These are the first, you know, the baby steps of some of these varieties in the state. So it's pretty crazy to see just how big it became. So speaking of importing varieties and people who are important, we have this gentleman called Agustin Harasti. And I'm so sorry if I'm, if I'm butchering that. Um, he was around from 1812 to 1869, um, and he's cited as both a colonel and count. So Colonel Augustine and Count Augustine, so um, whatever the preference is there. He was Hungarian-American. He was a nobleman, adventurer, traveler, writer, town builder, and pioneer winemaker in Wisconsin and California, of all places. He um, also has a very significant historical tie to Buena Vista Winery in Sonoma. Um, so you can click, this is a link, you can click and learn more about that winery if you want, but it's not required. Um, he, you know, was the founder of that winery and it still exists today. It's one of California's oldest wineries. He also wrote um, some literature and textbooks on California wine and viticulture. He um, was really passionate about making sure that at this time of California grape expansion that we were selecting grapes that were quality. We didn't want to just grow things because we could grow things. We have some of the most fertile soils in the world here, especially in our Central Valley um, here in California, but we wanted to make sure that we were picking the right varieties for the right places and that this is an industry that could develop credentials, could be respected and just produce really high quality stuff. So that was kind of his his passion and kind of his purpose at, in some parts of his life. Um, he was also the first town marshal and first county sheriff in San Diego, which is, this guy's all over the place, it's crazy. Um, so, so he, in this mission to, no pun intended, mission grapes, ah, in his mission to bring the top varieties from Europe to the United States. He was actually commissioned by the governor of California at the time, Governor Downey. And so in 1861, he went abroad and he brought over 300 varieties back to California for, for studying, for growing, and just developing to see what exactly was best for this region. 
Um, some of them are lost in travel due to difficulty and uh, of handling cuttings. So a lot of cuttings to deal with, especially back then. Um, there's a little bio about him here if you want to read more about him. Um, but ultimately, just a very important and interesting person. Um, he is considered the father of California viticulture by a lot of people. Um, but yeah, pretty crazy. So that was a lot of information. And here we are at our last slide, the student learning objectives. Take a deep breath. Congrats. You did it. Um, so what this is, is this will um, outline what you need to know for the quiz. So there will be a quiz about this. Um, the, I'll have a survey for you to do as well, but the quiz, will, this will be on the, uh, it'll be lecture one, intro to viticulture quiz. Um, yeah, so just go through these points and just feel, and just know that if you can answer or talk about these points, um, you should be ready for the quiz. So there's, there'll be no secrets. Um, no surprises. But yeah, thank you very much for for listening and watching this video. And we will meet on Wednesday. So if you have any questions, feel free to we'll go over things on Wednesday. If people have any concerns or are confused about anything, if you have a question that you need answered now, feel free to email me. My email is on that syllabus, Bloop. which is very, very tiny right here. Um, so yeah, my email is right here. It's, um, there's a couple different aliases for my email. You'll see this Keslek. It's just my last name without the R and the C. Um, you can also email claire.kessler at flc.losrios.edu. So either one's fine, or if you want to email me, send me a message through Canvas, that's okay too. Um, I do check those regularly. So, um, so yeah, if you have an important need to know question, answer right away, go ahead and send me an email. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all Wednesday night at 6.30 and A105 at the El Dorado Center. We can go over all this if we need to, and we'll just introduce ourselves, get to know each other, and yeah, it's going to be really good. So, cool. I will see you guys soon.